My name is Dr. Jeffrey Klein. I'm a dermatologist and a dermatologic clinical pharmacologist. In this video, I want to demonstrate to you some of the theoretical concepts of tumescent antibiotic delivery and then demonstrate how the technique is actually used. First, with a brief introduction to the instrumentation that is used, and then finally with a live demonstration of the tumescent infiltration on a live patient. Tumescent antibiotic delivery, or TAD, is intended to reduce the risk of surgical site infections in procedures that involve general anesthesia and perhaps open abdominal surgery. Tumescent antibiotic delivery deposits a very dilute solution of an antibiotic, such as cefazolin and or metronidazole, into the subcutaneous tissues where the surgical procedure will be performed, basically at the site of the incision. TAD takes advantage of the clinical pharmacology and the pharmacokinetics of tumescent lidocaine anesthesia. In, in essence, tumescent lidocaine anesthesia is a new mode of drug delivery into subcutaneous tissues. The local anesthetic aspect of tumescent lidocaine anesthesia produces long-lasting and profound local anesthesia, and there's an associated vasoconstriction that delays the absorption, systemic absorption of the antibiotic and the lidocaine, and therefore prolongs the local effect of the drug and diminishes the rate of systemic absorption. Therefore, the local anesthetic uh, is a technique for reducing absorption and then by adding an antibiotic to the solution, the antibiotic will stay in the local subcutaneous tissues for hours and hours at relatively high concentrations. In fact, the concentrations that can be achieved with TAD, tumescent antibiotic delivery, are at least one or two orders of magnitude greater than anything that can be achieved with the routine and conventional IV antibiotic delivery. Although the clinical pharmacokinetics of tumescent antibiotic delivery is well understood and the results of clinical studies have been published, the actual proof with a, based on clinical trials uh, that TAD will reduce the risk of surgical site infections remains to be proven by a clinical trial. This is a standard one liter bag of 0.9% physiologic saline or normal saline. Into this bag we've placed a gram of lidocaine, one milligram of epinephrine, 10 milliequivalents of sodium bicarbonate, and that combination produces a bag of tumescent lidocaine anesthesia. In addition, we've added a, a gram of cefazolin and 500 milligrams of metronidazole. The addition of those two water-soluble antibiotics creates a bag of tumescent antibiotic solution for prevention of surgical site infections. You'll notice an important feature of this bag of saline is that it is labeled with a safety label that says uh, very explicitly that this is not for IV delivery. There is a risk that uh, once the bag of tumescent lidocaine anesthesia or tumescent antibiotic solution has been mixed and is in the operating room, someone might inadvertently hang a bag and deliver it by IV infusion with uh, potentially disastrous consequences. So it's important that a safety label always be placed on any bag of tumescent lidocaine anesthesia. This is the new subcutaneous catheter, or a sub-Q cath. It's specifically designed to be inserted preoperatively under the skin at the site of a proposed surgical site incision. The catheter functions similar to that of an intravenous catheter, instead it is inserted under the skin. And it has a long series of small holes or apertures distributed along nearly the entire length of the catheter. 
Once this catheter is inserted under the skin preoperatively, the stainless steel stylet can be removed and the small catheter can re and flexible catheter can remain in place for the duration of the surgery and postoperatively. The benefit of using a sub-Q cath is that it can provide preemptive, preoperative analgesia and delivery of tumescent antibiotic solution at the site of a surgical incision. During the surgery, it can continue to deliver a slow rate of tumescent antibiotic solution. And postoperatively, it can provide a, a prolonged subcutaneous analgesia and anesthesia to pre prevent and uh, minimize postoperative pain. Hopefully, this will reduce the need for narcotic analgesia and accelerate the rate of postoperative recovery and accelerate the time in which patients can ambulate. In the final portion of this educational video, I'm going to demonstrate on a live volunteer patient the technique for tumescent antibiotic delivery. In an actual clinical setting, the patient might be under general anesthesia and the tumescent antibiotic delivery is an adjunct to the general anesthesia by providing very effective local anesthesia as well as subcutaneous antibiotics. In this patient, I've pre-marked a series of blue concentric topographical markings in order to show you the relative depth of the subcutaneous fat. This uh, dotted green line indicates uh, theoretic proposed surgical site incision for an open abdominal procedure. And the solid green lines indicate the path that I will insert the subcutaneous catheter. Once the subcutaneous catheter has been inserted, the stainless steel stylet can be removed and this flexible catheter will remain in place and can remain in place for a number of hours to provide continued uh, local anesthesia and perhaps continued antibiotics. The standard tumescent infiltration tubing and uh, it connects to the reservoir bag of tumescent antibiotic solution. We'll actually fill this syringe with the solution and then use that to inject into the dermis at the site where the sub-Q cath will penetrate the skin. So this is an empty syringe and we have a stainless steel hex connector. We apply the syringe to that and then using the, the pump, the peristaltic infiltration pump, we simply inf load the syringe with the solution. Then using a, a 30 gauge safety needle, 30 gauge needle applied to the syringe, we're ready to inject uh, blebs of tumescent local anesthesia into the dermis. I will inject uh, approximately one cc into this dermis at a site where the sub-Q cath will be inserted. We're inserting the catheter directly in the skin and using the peristaltic pump to pump local anesthetic slowly through the stylet as the, we advance the catheter. And now gently infiltrate. And the catheter has been placed. This, this is an example of 
2x tubing or y connection tubing. It allows us to infiltrate simultaneously through two separate catheters. Okay. I'm attaching the tumescent infiltration tubing to the 2x extension tubing. Now we'll attach this to the patient. Okay. Now, I just want to get that view. This is a tube holder tape which will help us hold the position of the tubing during infiltration. Okay. We're now ready to begin tumescent infiltration. First, open the clamps. And now, by stepping on the actuator for the tumescent infiltration pump, the peristaltic pump, the fluid will begin flowing. Typically, we will have the pump set at approximately 200 milliliters per minute infiltration rate. As we're doing this, you might be able to appreciate the area becoming slowly swollen with the tumescent local anesthesia. You can begin to see some of the blanching where the vasoconstriction and the tumescence is occurring. So far we've infiltrated approximately 500 milliliters. At this point the patient may feel a subtle stinging sensation as the local anesthetic is infiltrated into her subcutaneous tissues. We've now infiltrated approximately 700 milliliters of fluid, and the, as the tumescent occurs, it spreads laterally and medially, and will actually infiltrate these tissues as well as the peripheral tissues with the local anesthetic solution. And if you look carefully, you can see some of the vasoconstriction that is occurring, as well as the tumescence is now getting firm and tumescent. You can appreciate that this is now uh, swollen and firm. This tissue now contains approximately 850 milliliters of fluid. And this fluid has now distended, per, extended peripherally as well as medially. We, we've now infiltrated approximately 1,000 liters of tumescent antibiotic solution. You can see that the tissue is, is tumescent, swollen and firm with uh, extensive subcutaneous vasoconstriction. It's now been approximately 15 minutes since we completed the tumescent infiltration of approximately one liter of tumescent antibiotic solution. You can see the, the rather extensive subcutaneous blanching and vasoconstriction. The, the blanching indicates that the solution, the antibiotic solution has been dispersed and spread both laterally and centrally exactly where the incision will be made. In this video, I've demonstrated the insertion of a sub-Q catheter in a painless fashion in a patient who's wide awake without any sedation. The tumescent anesthetic solution consisted of approximately one liter of, uh, of solution infiltrated over approximately five minutes. Subsequently, 
the local anesthetic solution has dispersed widely and created a, a significant subcutaneous vasoconstriction. This provides good, high concentration of an antibiotic at precisely the site of incision and also provides considerable surgical hemostasis. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Klein. Thank you for watching this informational video.